Good morning, everyone. This is Mayor Sean Patterson Howard. It is Tuesday, April 20th. The time is 9.35 a.m. We are calling the Board of Estimate and Contract meeting into order right now. Um, Clerk Holmes, can you please do the roll call? Yes, ma'am. If I may, I'll proceed with the um, call of the meeting and then follow by the roll call. That's okay. If you okay. Great, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the Board of Estimate and Contract meeting for today, Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. Close of time is 9.30 a.m. This is a virtual only call. All participants are virtual. And, um, and for public safety, um, there is no seating available, of course, in City Hall, but those participants can be used via www.facebook.com forward slash M-O-U-N-T-C-R and they can also be found on the city's website, bbny.com. Your roll call, as per your request, ma'am, Controller Reynolds. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And can you, <clears throat> just for the record, for the virtual record, can you state your location, please? In my conference room. Thank you. In, in conference room. City Hall. Thank you. And Council President Griffin, sir. Here, location, Mount Vernon Public Library. Thank you. And PL. Thank you. And Mayor Patterson Howard. My room. Your room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You have a quorum. Great. Um, if you can proceed with the agenda. Thank you. Resolutions approving ordinances. Item number one is authorizing the mayor, city council, and the board of estimate to enter into an agreement with the Mount Vernon city clerk and the Mount Vernon board of water supply, establishing the office of the city clerk as the fiduciary charged with receipt of payments for deposits in the designated depository and Mount Vernon Board of Water Supply as the financial manager of all funds received under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, U.S. Department of Treasury and FEMA funds directed at the city of Mount Vernon, New York. So moved. Seconded on the question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds, I'll say you, ma'am. Absolutely not. That's the misappropriation of public funds. Thank you. Council President Griffin? Aye. Mayor Patterson Howard? Aye. Thank you. Item number two is directing the controller to pay the vendor Thompson, uh, Thompson Reuters slash Westlaw with a sum of $20,629.67. I'll move. Seconded. On question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds. Thompson Reuters has already, uh, we received the uh, vendor bills from the law department months late, but we did cut a check to the vendor, so I'm not sure why the city council got themselves involved with uh, finance because they don't know what they're talking about. So I just wanted to put that on the record, thank you. I'll say you on the, on the on your vote, please. Yeah. I am, I'm abstaining. That's why I gave a, a response, because they don't know what they're talking about. It's defective legislation once again. But thank you, thank you. I'll say you on motion number two. Aye. I'm sorry, I don't know what you And Mayor Patterson Howard? Aye. Thank you. For the record, um, I have not received the check to countersign for Thomson Reuters. I am not sure the controller has been cutting cashier's checks, um, and those don't come through my office, so I have no record of a check being cut, nor has that check been presented to my office for signature. So, um, you said the same thing about Zanzini. We will wait for that check to come to my office for signature uh -huh. because it has not come to my office at this time. You said so the same thing about Zanzini. Next item. Thank you, ma'am. Item number three is authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Verizon Connect, and that is for GPS real time tracking. Moved. Seconded. 
on the question. Hearing none, roll call. Roll Reynolds. Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item number four is authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with 105 Stevens Center LLC, care of the Hack Hackimon organization. That's for Mount Vernon Youth Bureau Strong Program. So moved. Seconded. One question. Hearing none, roll. Council Controller Reynolds? Yes. Thank you. Council President Griffith? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Patterson Howard? Aye. Thank you. Item number five is authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the New York State Department of Health for the CAPP program. Moved. Seconded. On the question. On the question, I haven't received any information. Can you explain what that is so that myself and the public would know? The CAP program is the um, Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Program. It is a program that we have been participating in for at least 10 years or more in the city of Mount Vernon and been funded for. That's not and my question. This is a renewal of that contract. Thank you. Um, please provide me a copy. It has been sent in the referral package. No, it wasn't. Please provide me a copy. I appreciate it. Welcome. We will send you another one. Uh, roll call. Controller Reynolds, how say you? I yes. Thank you. Council President Griffith? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Patterson? Aye. Thank you. Item number six is requesting permission to reclassify slash defund the position of cleaner and fund the position of laborer within the Department of Recreation. So moved. Seconded on the question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds? No. Council President Griffith? Aye. And Mayor Patterson Powell. Aye. Thank you. It is at no extra additional cost to the city, and reclassifying this position from cleaner to laborer allows for the individual to have an expanded job responsibility, which is a much more efficient use of tax dollars. So thank you very much. Next item. Thank you. Item number seven is directing the controller to pay the civil service property flash monitors for the sum of $7,500. So moved. Seconded. On the question. When did uh, city council become the finance department? It's so funny, it's laughable when they don't even know what's going on down here. But anyway, you can move forward. Roll call. Controller Reynolds, I'll say you on item number seven. I say that the uh, civil service department um, is acting uh, with fraudulent behavior. They've opened their own bank accounts. They have not provided me documentation of payment for those particular proctors. And until we receive the information to verify we're waiting on that. So why the city council would intervene is not my, is, is I don't know why. It's really none of their business because they don't know what they're doing. They need to ask the question before putting out and presenting to the public defective legislation. So thank I'm you. Sorry, I'm sorry, ma'am, we're on a roll call. I'll say you on your- I already told you. The city council is putting out defective legislation to the public to deceive them. Basically, like I said, we are right now reviewing documentation and we're waiting for the payment of those proctors from the civil service department, which we have not received. So no is my is my answer today. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Council President Griffith. Aye. May I pass it out? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Well, item number eight is requesting permission to defund the position of building inspector, fund fund the position of building clerk create a temporary health budget line and transfer funds within the Department of Buildings. So moved. Seconded. On the question. Hearing none, roll call. Reynolds? 
No. Thank you. Council President Griffith? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Benson Howard? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. This is once again um, for efficiency. The clerk, uh, building department is short clerks and it is very difficult processing the um, volume of requests for permits that come in. We have four building inspectors. Um, two of those positions have been empty. One is being filled now. One is being converted into a clerk um, so that paperwork can be processed and we can execute uh, permits and other paperwork um, quickly, more quickly for our public, as well as we will be bringing on in the next week or so, five code enforcement officers. And so that will also help to um, ramp up any public concerns um, and reviews that we need to do a property. So a building clerk was most needed and the additional monies that are saved from that transfer will be what's deposited in the temporary helpline. So thank you very much. Next item. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine is granting permission to the Department of Public Safety to accept four police vehicles from the Westchester County Police Department. As a move. Seconded on the question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds. I have to abstain. I'm not sure um, why um, they would be leasing it to us for a dollar. I don't know what the trade off is. So I'm abstaining at this moment until I see an agreement. Thank you. Council President Griffin. Aye. Thank you. And Mayor Pence. Aye. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the city of Mount Vernon, I would like to thank. Uh, County Executive George Latimer and his incredible team um, for leasing this to us for a dollar. This lease uh, operates, I believe, through 2023, 2024 for one dollar. These are four vehicles that they've decommissioned on the county level and are giving to Mount Vernon or leasing to Mount Vernon for a dollar for that period of time. Um, so we're very grateful. We have a very aging fleet and we needed to uh, replace these. We also want to thank um, our county legislator, um, legislator Woodson Samuels for, you know, carrying this legislation to the floor and getting it approved by the Westchester County Board of Legislators. Yes, Council President Griffith. Um, it just should be noted that these are decommissioned vehicles. Uh, these are 2010 and 2011 vehicles that the county has used, abused in their form, and now it's time for us to do what Mount Vernon does to vehicles. So these are 10-year-old vehicles that they are leasing to us for $1. They were decommissioned. They could have easily have thrown them away, tossed them in the garbage, but Mount Vernon has use for these vehicles. So a dollar lease for four vehicles that are 10 years old. Um, it's as simple as that. I, it's Thank you, County Legislator. Uh, thank you, um, um, account, uh, County Executive, um, for um, looking out for Mount Vernon once again in, in this regard. Thank you. I mean, and there's absolutely no trade off. Our Commissioner Glenn Scott um, contacted the Commissioner of the Westchester County Police Department to get this ball rolling. Um, we were, we tried to, we attempted to purchase um, vehicles at an auction back in 2020 with our federal $666. These are monies that are reimbursed to Mount Vernon um, for the work that we do with uh, different federal agencies like the ATF, the FBI. Um, these monies are earmarked to be utilized for projects such as equipment replacement. Um, we put in a request, that check was not cut. We were unable to secure vehicles. And so we are very low on our vehicles right now. Um, and because vendors have not been paid, it's difficult to get parts for vehicles. And so being able to get four free used vehicles, well, not free, for a dollar vehicle from the county um, will definitely serve as a Band-Aid for us right now. Thank you. So next item. I remember uh, the county, uh, we're talking about Memorial Field. Let's go back there. No, there was a trade-off. I didn't interrupt you. Memorial Field. We are I didn't interrupt you. You're past it. Point of order. No, we're not past it. There was a trade-off. You order. leased Memorial Field to the oh, county. 
free. Mount Vernon has to pay to fix it. That was a trade off. I am now. Okay? Tell the truth. Stop lying. We may go over to the next section. Item number 10 is under tax revenue and settlements. And item number 10 is settling tax revenue proceedings for 524 South 10th Corp slash 524 South 10th Avenue for the amount of $16,506.57. Move. Hey, sir, can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. I can repeat it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, item number 10 is settling tax review proceedings for 524 South 10th Corp slash 524 South 10th Avenue. Okay. For this amount of $16,506.57. And we had we had a motion, I believe I Council President Griffith, I'm I'm waiting for a second. Second. I, thank you, Mayor Patterson Howard. Second by Mayor Patterson. On the question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds, I'll say go on item number 10. I say no documents received, so no. Thank you, Council President Griffith. Aye. Thank you. Mayor Patterson Howard. I and I thank you for your office clerk Holmes for always delivering the documents to all of the principals as part of this meeting, not only in person stamp, but you've also emailed them. We all have working emails and we've all received the same documents. Next item. I'm not even going to argue with you. Here, that is that is your childish annex. Basically, you don't even know what you're talking about. I need a document from the law department so you don't know once again what you, what the rhetoric that you're spewing and lying to the public like you always do. It's a shame that it's a shame that you. I may, Madam, Madam Controller, if I may. Setting, item number 11 is settling the tax review proceedings for 55 Air Bar Tenants Corp. It's 55 Airborne Avenue for the amount of $12,112.16. So moved. Seconded. You are unmuted, Controller Reynolds. You can, you know, speak I again. didn't ask you for anything. I just want you to know you I didn't ask you for anything. I just asked you to stop lying. Can you? Thank you. If you can do that. I believe we're in discussion Reverend. on the motion. Seconded. We are in discussion on the motion if you see fit. Madam Mayor. On the question, hearing none, roll call. Reynolds. As I stated before, the documents for these uh, cases were not received from the law department, so I have to say no. Thank you. Council President Griffith. Aye. Thank you, sir. And Mayor Patterson. Aye. Thank you. Next item. Item number 12 is settling tax review proceeding for Rapini Enterprises LLC at 8 North McQuestion Parkway and for the amount of $20,786.78. So moved. Seconded. On the question. Hearing none, roll call. Controller Reynolds. Once again, those documents were not received in, in, in the, from the law department to my office, so I could not review them. So no is my vote today. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Griffith. Sorry, where are we? We are we are we are on roll call for item number 12, sir. Hi. Thank you, ma'am. I'm saying thank you, sir. I'm sorry. And ma'am. Council, um, Mayor Patterson Howard, how say you on item 12? Aye. Thank you. And that ends your agenda. The uh, settlement uh, actually comes So I here. actually have to leave the call. I have things to do when I have constituents waiting for me. So I'm going to end my meeting, Brian Johnson, so you can, you know, spew your hatred and rhetoric and your false uh, antics to the public. but. I'll see you later. Oh, Have a good day, yeah. everyone. Not, not, Have, not a good day. Not, Have a good day. Have a good day. Hold on. It's fine. Madam, ma Madam Comptroller, I, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I do not hate you, but I do want to create an accurate record. So the Comptroller's office, when it is open, meets with the assessor and the attorney that she has not paid to receive these tax review settlements. 
and she's the comptroller is not paying them and they are at 9% per annum in which we are at risk of going back to court due to non-payment. Additionally, the Westfall account has not been paid back from 2018 to 2019 and to my knowledge has still not been paid and it's a central item that law department needs to operate. Thank you very much. Um, and for, the, for the record, um, if I may, the um, civil service monitors uh, had, had tradi traditionally been paid on time in the past. Uh, for some reason, um, the most recent monitors have not been paid. I'm sure that the civil service office has done nothing different than they've done in the past. Um, these are monitors that get paid, I think something like $150 each for monitoring. Um, and we've had long discussions with civil service about these monitors not being paid, but the monitors being paid, um, the next round of tests can't be done. So um, we're definitely looking. And I also wanna say um, that the um, sections one through nine, the resolutions approving all or or ordinances um, were reviewed by the council, each council member under committee. Uh, it was then forwarded to the council, for the council to review um, on the whole. So these items are, are not taken lightly at all from the council. If, if I wanted to not vote for these, I would have to check back with the council as to why I, for some reason, wanted to vote against um, what the council voted for. So um, these are the items, especially items one through nine, uh, were not taken lightly by the council at all. They were all reviewed by the entire city council and passed accordingly uh, for the record. Thank you. So I want to um, go back just uh, as part of the open item discussion. The American Rescue Plan monies that will are expected to come into the city of Mount Vernon in May in the amount of $42.6 million. I wanna thank the council for working with this administration um, to identify a workaround. Yes, and it was a workaround. And the reason that we created a workaround is because monies that come into the city oftentimes are not properly transferred, bills are not paid, and we have lost services. We have had equipment repossessed over the past year. Our um, insurance for our CSEA, for their vision and their dental has been canceled. EAP insurance has been canceled, um, which is employee assistance program insurance has been canceled. Revenues have not been um, received on the end of the controller's office um, from police, fire, uh, civil service, and other departments, the building department as well. And when revenues are received and processed by her office, oftentimes they are turned back six, eight months, a year later, stale checks that it's very difficult to go and recollect again. We cannot continue to deal with the um, deleterious behavior of, of the controller. We absolutely cannot deal with that any longer. And so in order to ensure that this $42.6 million is utilized for the benefit of the citizens of Mount Vernon, we are in the process um, and it has been legislated that a separate bank account be created through the city clerk's office, that this money be receded from the federal government to come into the city clerk's office to be transferred to the Board of Water Supply. Now, we know that in the past, there have been issues with the Board of Water Supply and mayors utilizing the Board of Water Supply to pay off their own personal bills and things of that nature. And this money did not necessarily have checks and balances. Because we understood that challenge, what we did is we are treating for the purposes of the American Rescue Monies as well as FEMA reimbursements, we are treating the Board of Water Supply as another department. And so expenditures and monies that go into that um, account in the Board of Water Supply and expenditures made, first we'll go through a budget and a budget process and a budget hearing like we do with our regular budget. Um, and it will go through the council and the Board of Estimate and expenditures that are made. Once again, those requests will be made to the council, they'll be passed. They'll come to the Board of Estimate. As you saw today, we approved expenditures for the CAP program, for rent, payments for different things. It will go through that process. So therefore, the checks and balances will be put in place that are not historically there to ensure that the monies, 
that have come into the city to benefit the citizens of Mount Vernon do just that. Um, look, we tax deadline for the city of Mount Vernon was April 15th. And unfortunately, the controller's office was closed more than it was open. Um, there were days that she claimed it was closed for COVID cleaning. No one was in there cleaning that office unless they let off some type of fogger and, and that didn't happen. Um, it was closed down early on other days. Many residents were frustrated that they could not pay their bills. The county taxes are due on the 30th, but the city taxes are due on the 15th. We have pictures and video of the controller's mailbox being full to the brim. We've had to take the mail downstairs because she has not come upstairs to get it. And this has been a problem. Taxpayers are calling and saying they've sent in their tax payments. They are waiting for their checks to clear and it does not happen. We cannot continue this way. So yes, because we are dealing with unprecedented issues in unprecedented times, we've had to make some unprecedented um, decisions and create workarounds to ensure that this money is not lost into the deep dark black hole that has become the controller's office. And so there is no one who is going to have um, unchecked um, access to this money just to spend it as they choose. It will go through a checks and balances process. And I'm grateful that the um, county, that the city council worked along with the administration to create this path. Yes, Councilman Griffith. And, and Madam Mayor, we may want to say that the, um, yes, the council um, worked with your office, the administration, to come up with this uh, workaround. Uh, we spent um, the better part, we spent weeks looking into this and really delving into exactly what we needed to do, how it needed to be done, how it can be a very transparent um, how we do it, how it's official, how it works through your office, how the council has some say in it as well. So I think, Madam Mayor, and I'm just thinking this actually when we're on the meeting, in the, in the path of transparency, uh, we may want to put together um, some sort of forum or so, and maybe, or what we can do is to identify um, the members who um, participated in this process and understand the path that we're looking to take um, so that the community can understand better. Most definitely, um, any member can ask yourself as the, the elected official and can ask any council member um, what our process was towards this. And I'm sure any council member um, can explain um, how we got to this place and why we're, we went down this path and what we're thinking. Um, but it may be good for you to identify some of the members of your team that have also worked on this um, committee, if you will, to put this process together. Of course, Brian Johnson, Corporation Council, um, 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 Chief of Staff Darren Morton, but maybe we need to identify um, the, the writers of this plan and then we can get feedback uh, from the community as well. Um, but it needs to be at some point explained what we are doing, why we're doing it, um, our limitations to doing it um, so that the community can get a feel for how we are, the council and the mayor's office and the administration is working really hard to protect. Key word is to protect, to defend the taxpayers, the residents of Mount Vernon um, in this process that we put together. So I think that is a great suggestion. I mean, I will offer if you don't mind, um, I don't, and if people are available Sundays with Sean, um, it, it is a Sunday evening. It's a platform that many of our residents are used to. We can also do it at another day and time, but I just know with the schedule of the council, you know, that might be dicey, but I'll offer that up um, if that is of interest and we will definitely bring all of the members on um, and we'll advertise it. So if we decide we wanna use that for this Sunday, um, I'll reach out to all of the team members uh, and we'll advertise that and push that out through some email blasts. One of the things that we are also doing is we are creating and we are pushing out an online survey so that our residents can weigh in um, on, the, on the key buckets for which this money is to be spent, like infrastructure, public health and safety, um, you know, essential workers, um, government services, uh, community for a community benefit and economic development. So we're putting that survey out. So as the guidelines around the American Rescue Plan are made clearer, um, that we can give more and more information to the community and make sure that there is community voice included in this. 
Yes. And then maybe, so I, I want to thank you, Madam Mayor, for offering up your Sunday evenings um, to devote to Sundays with Sean so you get that information out. Um, the standing meeting uh, for information uh, for the public is our council meetings. Okay. So the next council meeting we have is the 28th. So maybe what we need to do is start um, advertising and broadcasting that on the 28th we'll have more information. Um, and then I'm going to ask you, Madam Mayor, or somebody from your administration to come to that meeting because we know they're televised. It's like an episode. We have a series going on. Our council meetings, it's like <laughs> you missed an episode, right? So um, yeah. um, come to that meeting. And at the beginning of the meeting, I'm offering up. Um, I haven't spoken to the council about this yet, but I think it is best for the communication with the public that for the 28th, we'll have time to prepare and we'll be able to um, talk about um, initially uh, what we're doing and then maybe do a brief um, question and answer session, a quick hearing, if you will, so that we can get information from the public about where, what their concerns are. But most definitely, if we try to present to the public what we're doing and why we're doing it, um, maybe it would avert a lot of those questions that people have. We definitely don't want our community um, thinking that we're up to something. Well, the reality is that we are up to something. We're up to good things. The money. Preventative measures um, to protect all of us, and we need to um, explain that so people understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. So the 28th council meeting, um, I think we should start with um, half an hour, usually ends up being an hour, and I say half an hour of just explaining what, when, why, and how we're doing this. Thank you. Absolutely. I have no issue with that. So the next council meeting, um, after you speak to your colleagues, your the honorable body, then please let us know and we'll make sure that our team is prepared um, to present and, and have that discussion at that time. So that's great. Um, so I also wanted to give an update on the fuel issue. Oh, um, I'm sorry. One, one second, Matt, Madam Mayor. Um, we also, the control at any point, right, is welcome to give any comments. She's going to be provided with all the documents uh, related to the, um, the funds that are going to the water department at any time she can give her input. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Comptroller Reynolds, you are still part of this meeting. I just wanted to let you know that you're still part of the meeting because you never exited the meeting. So we can hear your conversation. Comptroller Reynolds, would you like to rejoin the conversation? I'm going to mute her so that we don't hear her background because she does not realize that she did not exit the meeting and that she's still a part of it. Um, the last thing that I wanted to give an update on, I wanted to give an update on the fuel challenge um, that we were having with um, bills being paid. As we know, the judge ordered that the bills were paid on April 2nd. Um, the controller did provide um, a combination of cashier's checks and regular bank checks to Sprague as well as United Metro Fuel. A few days later, even though it was not necessarily ordered at that time, she did use a cashier's check to pay global. Um, one, one of the challenges that we experienced um, within the past few days is that Sprague contacted us and they let us know that not the, that, that the cashier's checks were fine, those were guaranteed, but unfortunately the paper checks, the regular cut on city of Mount Vernon, cut, out, cut by the controller's office and signed by her and countersigned by me, that two of those checks bounced. So two of those checks bounced and there were insufficient funds in the city of Mount Vernon account to cover those. Um, the bank told them not to redeposit them. We have been reaching out to the controller to ask her about the status of those checks, if she could reissue those checks or if she wanted to get more certified checks to pay Sprague, she has not responded. Um, she did contact Sprague and tell them just to redeposit the checks, but the bank told them that they could not just redeposit the checks. They actually stamped on the checks, do not redeposit. Um, so at this time, Sprague, which is our diesel fuel vendor, uh, has not been fully paid and they have delivered um, two, 
to um, diesel deliveries to the city of Mount Vernon since um, that date. So we need to make sure that the controller is paying Sprague and paying them according to our agreement. Um, she has to replace the bounced checks, which are of great concern um, to me because it, it's unbelievable how a city would bounce checks right now. So that is of great concern to me. And we will keep you updated. Um, you know, Brian, if we, corporate counsel, if we need to uh, send a, a notice to the judge, we can send one to the judge. I, I'll let that be um, led by you. And the last thing that I want to address. Well, on, 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 the, on the note of that, uh, we still don't, to your point about not knowing what's in the account, as you know, the city council passed ordinances and followed the lawsuit in that regard. Uh, the comptroller still has not provided any information. The judge ruled in the council's uh, favor um, and still nothing from the comptroller's office. Uh, the city filed a motion to find the comptroller in contempt of court. The judge denied it. And um, so we are still um, trying to get the information. So I just wanted to add that to the record. Yes. And, and so the last thing is um, the state auditor, um, Comptroller DiNapoli's office released, I believe on Friday, um, a letter because they did a budget review. And in the budget review, uh, they expressed that they were concerned about the revenues and some of the expenditures that there might be an over um, forecast of revenues and an under forecast for expenditures. Um, I'm very pleased with the letter that they sent. Um, some people might say, why are you pleased with the letter they sent? Because these are all of the things that we, ex that we stated during the budget process, that we were creating a budget um, and we lacked the proper information that should have been provided by the comptroller's office um, to forecast certain things. Uh, we, you know, one of the things they brought into question was the four point, I believe, seven, six million dollars that we put into the fund balance, stating that we were, you know, going off assumptions from 2016 audit and looking what had been allocated in 2017 and 18 and nothing in 19 and 20 to make that determination and um, that they were concerned about that. But what we did, what we did is we used the information that we had. She did not confirm any information. We know that the controller on many occasions had stated that she was utilizing the fund balance to flow the city. And so the assumption is that in the first 20 days of the year, um, the monies that she used for payroll were the monies from the fund balance, the reserves as she called them. And so we put that into the budget. Now, you know, months ago, probably back in October or even maybe before that, I had held a press conference along with the council and many of our commissioners. And we talked about the potential um, budget forecast for the 2021 year. We talked about a potential 20% increase in taxes, which we know is unsustainable for our residents and anyone else. Um, and we also talked about the layoff of, you know, almost 20% of our workforce. And everyone screeched back and said, you know, this can't be real, this cannot be true, this can't be accurate. And I said, it absolutely is. And there were even people who said it was all smoke and mirrors. Well, I'm here to tell you, based on the state controller's reports and findings, it was not smoke and mirrors. The controller did not cooperate with the budgeting process as the chief fiscal officer for the city of Mount Vernon, she has not in over 39 months provided the administration nor the council with detailed monthly reports on revenues and expenditures. Um, as I stated, we created the budget in the blind based on her failure to give us backup documentation um, the state, and there are people who say, well, that, that's unbelievable. How does she not give that information? If you read the state controller's eight page letter, they'll even say that there's information that they were unable to attain, obtain from her. And, and they were unable to get that information. So we've stated that the mayor's office, the administration and the legislative body of the council have not been able to obtain information from her as well as the state controller's office. This is a very scary time fiscally for Mount Vernon. 
What we did not want to do, understanding that public safety and public health are of paramount um, responsibilities of city government, and understanding that one of the only ways that we were, would have been able to balance the budget was to eliminate about 25 police positions and fire positions and another 15 to 20 DPW positions, that was not a risk that we could take. And so, yes, we put that money in the fund balance and we made the assumption that it was there. We also knew that potentially monies would be coming from the federal government through the American Rescue Plan um, and that would fill that hole. And so those are the, some, some of the assumptions we've made. One of the other questions that they had was the sale of city-owned properties just being a one-time issue. We understand that too. Um, the sale of the YMCA, there is a purchaser for that. That deal is ready to go. It's just a function of the council um, voting on it and, and the real estate uh, committee working through that process. We have a uh, property, um, another property on question Parkway that we counted within our budget projections for this year. That sale is good and ready to go. Um, so we know that those are solid revenue projections for this year, for this year. Yes, next year we're going to have to look at some other options and we're gonna look at expanded opportunities for revenue, but we had to make decisions based on the information that we currently had and we did that. And from the very beginning of the process, we were very clear that um, there was great risk involved and there would might be uh, adjustments that would have to be made as we went through the year. So we are happy about the American rescue money that is coming in. That money is not just meant to fill a hole. It's also meant for us to be able to build upon some of the things that we need and take care of some um, deferred maintenance for us to be able to purchase some much needed equipment so that we can continue. We can pay for our staff, but if they don't have equipment and supplies to do their job, it makes it very difficult for us to deliver services to the city. So this is not just to replace um, tax revenues that we may have lost. It's also to deal with some very essential issues and challenges that we have in the city around infrastructure, around government services, um, around economic development, essential workers, and those areas, so forth, as it has been designed by the federal government. As we stated, um, we will be having a somewhat of a hearing, and we'll get back to you about that at the next council meeting um, to give you more information on the American Rescue Plan. The second issue was FEMA monies. Yes, because we did have tremendous overtime. There were tremendous overtime runs in 2020. On March 10th, we had four firefighters um, who were infected with COVID and that started a spread in the fire department. And we saw quickly COVID spreading in our police department amongst our dispatchers and our uniformed officers. Then it went over to DPW, the water department, the parking bureau, and, and everywhere in the city, just like it did across the country. And so in police, fire, and DPW, we experienced significant overruns. We had, um, we went into 2020 with a lot of positions open in the fire department, in the police department, um, and in DPW. And so vacant positions necessarily necessitated, yes, necessitated, required overtime, required, let, let's make it easy, required overtime. Um, and when COVID hit uh, and having staff out um, with COVID, um, having to follow the CDC regulations around those who had to quarantine, who were exposed to the individuals who had tested COVID positive, yes, we had thousands and thousands of hours of required overtime. And one of the things that I'm very grateful about is FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, um, they recognized that there were cost overruns due to COVID all throughout, throughout the United States in city government, um, state government, county government. And so they have created an opportunity for us to go in and be reimbursed for a lot of that COVID related expenses and overtime in purchasing of um, personal protective equipment 
in, in extra sanitization that was required and in, in giving out food like we did um, through our Office of the Aging and our Department of Recreation. And so we have a team that is processing those expenditures so that we could recoup the monies that we spent, the, the big overruns that we had in DPW, fire, um, and the police department, as well as the cost of food that we, you know, gave out and the sanitization. Um, and the challenge with that is that the controller has refused to provide us with um, benefits information because we cannot, we don't, we can get the money back for salary and benefits. And we've been challenged to getting information out of her office so that we can submit these applications. This is up to $7 million or more that we should be able to get reimbursed through FEMA um, for the city of Mount Vernon. And so that money, as well as the American Rescue Plan money, will go through the clerk's office to the Board of Water Supply um, to take care of city expenditures. Uh, and the last thing, um, Council President Griffith, I know online there are people who are asking about the bank account review and if you have an update on that and where the council stands. And I just wanna say for the record, um, the, the suing of the controller or taking the controller to court was done by the council and the mayor's office. The council is the legislative body, so they lead, but it was done in conjunction and the council and the office of the mayor our joint petitioners in all of those cases. So we are doing this together. It is not a ganging up, but the two branches of government that are supposed to operate and run the government are working together to make sure that we're able to serve the citizens of Mount Vernon. So Council President Griffith, concerning the bank review. Um, the, <laughs> the bank review is, is continuing. Um, I have, um, um, majority of the information and the council is reviewing how we are um, going to distribute that information. There is a lot of um, sensitive information included in it. Um, so we have to be very careful with how that information is distributed. Um, we, the council has to re-meet. I'm actually thinking, um, and I'm talking to council members individually, uh, but I'm actually thinking about putting a special commission together uh, for the review of these bank, these, 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 this bank account information. I can tell you that originally we received um, 1,800 pages um, from Chase Bank. Um, we had a second round of information that came from Chase Bank, but before that, um, we made sure to um, um, obtain the subpoena from Sterling Bank, as well as some of the other banks. Um, Sterling came in as well, as well. Um, the council probably can um, provide the information as to the simple uh, bank account information for each one of those accounts. Um, we can put that together. Um, what, what is more concerning are the details that came in from um, Chase Bank. The second round of details that came in from Chase Bank, and I'm, I believe I've said this before, but if I didn't, it's, it's, I have no um, problem with saying it here. The second round of statements that came in or information that came in from Chase Bank um, totaled over 100,000 pages of data. Again, 100,000 pages of data based on the subpoena that we requested um, from Chase Bank. So quite naturally, it's a lot to um, um, handle and to review. The council is reviewing it. Um, we have our other um, matters of business that we're looking into. And as you all know, council members are part-time employees. This is not a full-time job for the council. So we have been in discussions, um, a few of us have been in discussions about um, possibly hiring a forensic accountant um, to review some of that data as well, um, because we're not only looking into um, dollars and cents, we're looking into processes and activities and transactions. Um, so there are a lot of things going on. We're starting to ask um, certain administrative um, or departments for information. We are collecting information. Um, and just like the state did, um, their process took some time and they are professionals at auditing certain things. Um, I may be an, um, a financial um, professional and executive. Um, other council members are not as much. Um, so it's, it's, it's getting to the point so overwhelming um, that we um, possibly um, can need to decide to outsource this level of um, review 
um, to an outside agency. Um, and, but we haven't talked about that in, in committee yet at all. Um, we need to continue to discuss that. Um, and we will be more revealing, um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, but we have to, again, the council has to review it. We all have to talk about it. We all have to vote collectively on how we're gonna handle this. And we've taken a few steps, um, but we have not continued on that process um, uh, probably as diligently as we could, um, especially with council meetings, board of estimate meetings, other meetings that we actually, actually have to do. Um, but we're getting back to that. And it's, I can tell you that it is concerning what we're looking into. So there will be more information um, coming. And Madam Mayor, if you have any um, questions, um, we can relay that to your office, um, of course, because you have inside knowledge. Um, you're not, um, your office, we're not worried about um, relaying sensitive information um, to your office as much. We're, we're talking about releasing information to the public where there's most definitely sensitive employee information, transactional information that we, we cannot um, disclose to the public. So uh, a lot to unwind. Um, again, Chase, over 100,000 pages of documents. Um, we've, su uh, we've subpoenaed um, um, Sterling. We've subpoenaed all of the local branches, um, 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 local Westchester branches as to where there were some funds. Um, and we have received tremendous amounts of data and we're going to continue to review it. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a council member um, that I've been working with um, um, and where we have some ideas. And again, we need to formulate um, some committees and even consider having some outsourcing done to get this work done. So it's a lot to unwind. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'd like to just uh, reconcile some statements that we made, right? So we're saying that the, the comptroller, that we don't have the information, but I want to be clear that some of the information um, that uh, City Council President Marcus Griffiths got was by way of a legislative uh, subpoena. It does not include all of the information that the mayor and the city council asked of the comptroller that was subject to the lawsuit. Um, and uh, at both instances, the information has not been given willingly uh, by the comptroller's office. So there's still a lot of outstanding information um, that is not being provided. So I just wanted to reconcile those two statements. And, you know, the last thing that I have to say is I'm concerned with the amount of um, electronic fund transfers that the comptroller does to pay um, bills. We, we have no checks and balances around that. Electronic fund transfers should be signed off uh, and countersigned by my office, and they are not. Um, the increased use of certified checks or cashier's checks for the controller's office, again, going and to the bank and, and making these actions on her own without me as the chief executive officer or the mayor um, being able to countersign or have knowledge of this. So, you know, th the money's being transferred. We don't know sometimes where, when, and how. Um, there is no adequate tracking of it and there are no checks and balances. And so as you're reviewing those bank accounts and as you look to potentially bring in an outside forensic auditor, um, which costs the city money that it should not cost. If the controller's office just did their job and they were transparent and forthcoming in providing reports um, as is expected of any financial office, then we would not have to utilize and go through this exhaustive process of court um, spending money for lawyers. We wouldn't have to deal with subpoenas. We wouldn't have to subpoena banks and ask them to send us, us hundreds of thousands of pages of documentation, over 100,000 just from Chase, that doesn't include Sterling and the other banks though. Um, and, and then the council who is, are not the CFOs of the city, having to pour weeks and months of, of man hours um, reviewing information that should be made readily available. And so while people are quite concerned about transparency, and they're quite concerned about why we would go around the controller. We have perfect reason and, and clear reason why we've done this. And this is not so that these monies can be um, in our candy pocket or something of that nature. 
as some would try and project. And I understand that it is political season. And I understand the silliness of political season. But I'm asking that people be very responsible in, in presenting truth to the public and not trying to misinform the public for political gain. The, the financial stability of the city of Mount Vernon is at hand as never before. And when you have a controller who refuses to pay bills, when you have medical benefits that are being cut off, when you have equipment that is being confiscated and repossessed, when you have vendors who have cut the city off, when we are still paying medical benefits for people who left the city three and four years ago, there is so much work that is clearly not being done by that office. And there are positions down there that are vacant that will allow her to hire competent and qualified people and why she chooses to continue to keep those positions vacant. The first deputy controller's position is vacant and has been vacant um, from since 2018, just a few months into 2018. The second deputy controller's position was vacant only until a few months ago. And that was a transfer from within her department. And we don't know necessarily the qualifications of that person. So there have been positions downstairs that are vacant that will allow her to hire the correct individuals to do the type of work that needs to be done in that office. And for some reason, she has refused to do so. Um, but we are pressing forward anyway, because the city of Mount Vernon um, has to operate. The residents must receive their services. And we are absolutely um, partially handcuffed. We are trying to serve this community with one hand behind our back, but our resolve is to serve the community and do what we have to do. Unfortunately, there are many obstacles that are financial that are in our way, but we will continue to press forward. And again, I thank the state controller's office um, for providing this report. You know, a lot of people said, well, how could you do that? It's not favorable to you. It's not about whether or not it's favorable to me. It's the truth. And it's the same truth that we've been speaking um, for months now about the fiscal stability and the lack of information that is available coming out of the controller's office for us to be able to make sound, reasonable um, financial decisions for the city of Mount Vernon. Yes, Council President. I'm just going to um, try. I'm just. I'm going to say this, right, um, Madam Mayor. You and and thank you, um, Corporation Council Johnson. Um, for uh, cleaning up um, stuff that we've um, uh, that we've said, so you, yes, your perspective is is critical. Um, yes, it is political season. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I can say that the people that truly believe in this city, the people that are truly working for the absolute best interests of this city, have prioritized what needs to be done for the city first. Politics come way second way second. So there's people amongst us in this election realm that um, know what the election silliness goes on, but our priorities are way at the top and we are going to continue to protect the city and we'll never get credit for the things that we're doing for this city. People usually don't even know. After it's all over and it's totally clear, people still think they know what went on and they actually have no clue what went on and what we've done um, to protect the residents. So um, I can say that uh, myself and um, a few key people are absolutely looking to protect the city. And yes, when you have all this information subpoenaed and then you have, a, and you, have, you know what you know from what you subpoenaed, and then you know that there are millions of dollars coming in your priority then shifts and it's so perfected as to what your objective is, <laughs> right? Is now to protect our money, our finances from the subpoena information that you have. And when you couple those together, it is so clear in my mind what we need to do. The mayor knows this, our administration knows this, most of the council understand this and our priorities are crystal clear and people can try to attack, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We are going to do what we need to do to protect the entity that is the city of Mount Vernon. It's as simple as that. So, Madam Mayor, I thank you for your work. Uh, Corporation Council, uh, uh, Chief Morton, uh, uh, Dr. Spruill, uh, we are all working really hard 
to uh, um, come up with the solutions to our problem, uh, whether um, people um, are supportive of us or not, are on track to do what we need to do. And if anybody has a better idea, we'll take it. But right now, this is the path we're going down and, 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 and it must be done, must be done. Yes. I, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, we're just gonna ask on the mayor's page, Mayor SPH and also on CMBNY are the surveys regarding the American Rescue Plan. We'll also ask if the clerk will share it to the city council page. And we're asking people to please go online take the survey concerning the American Rescue Plan and please share it with your friends. We want as much input as we can possibly get. And if you have not registered yet to receive um, email blasts from the city of Mount Vernon, please go to our website at www.cmvny.com and please sign up for our email list. We wanna keep you updated and informed as much as possible. And please share that information, especially with people who are not on social media, because we do weekly and, and several e-blasts from the city of Mount Vernon to the community um, during the week, and we want to keep people informed. So if there is no other business to be done, um, can we make a motion for roll call to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second it. We can. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for your kind words to the staff of the office of city clerk. I will convey that to them because they work hard to support not only the council, but of course the Board of Estimates, the two legislative bodies. And so I will convey your sentiment to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. I echo the mayor's sentiments. Your department is easy to work with. I enjoy our relationship. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, Controller Reynolds. Controller Reynolds. Council President Griffin. She's meeting with constituents. Council President Griffin. There was an appointment. Um, aye. Thank you. And Mayor Patton Howard. Aye. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Be well, everyone.